It is sunny and warm and windy, especially in the central part of South Dakota where there are fire concerns. Overnight tonight, it's still going to remain on the breezy side and it's going to remain on the warm side as well. Sioux Falls, a low of 61. Aberdeen, windy in 67. Pier windy 67. At Rapid City, you could see some isolated thunder showers a little bit cooler there in the mid-50s. Now, during the day tomorrow, it's going to be breezy once again. Sioux Falls, mostly sunny, 85. Aberdeen, breezy, 83. Pier, breezy, 84. Maybe some late-day showers. Rapid City could also see some late-day showers. High temperature, 79. The weekend looks mostly dry and pretty nice. We'll have those forecast details coming up. Kelloland News starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group. Kelloland News, first at four. Coming up, we're going to tell you what we know about a car versus bus crash that sent 12 people to the hospital. Plus, how the city of Minneapolis is changing the way it handles homeless encampments. And we have an update on Tropical Storm Francine. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. We're following developing news in Sioux Falls. A second man is charged in connection with the city's most recent murder. Brian Jones is charged with two counts of being an accessory to homicide. He made his first court appearance about an hour ago and the judge set his bond at a quarter million dollars cash only. Uh, according to court documents, surveillance video allegedly shows Jones driving Dylan Farmer to and from Friday night's deadly shooting. Farmer is charged with first and second degree murder. Jones is also accused of having ammunition in his home of the same brand and caliber as the ammo that killed Casey Schaefer. Extra police were at Sioux Falls schools this morning after a student accused of bringing a weapon to the school escaped from juvenile custody. The 15-year-old boy is accused of having a weapon outside Axdale Park School on Wednesday. He was brought into juvenile custody and then escaped somehow last night. Authorities arrested him again late this morning. Kelloland News reached out to the school district about the case. In an email statement, the district says staff were notified this morning and additional precautions were taken at Axdale Park with support from the police department. The district says they're grateful to the community member who reported the concern by following the see something, say something protocol. We'll have a closer look at the situation tonight on Kelloland News at 5. Meanwhile, school on the Pine Ridge Reservation was canceled today due to safety concerns from a Facebook post. The Oglala Sioux Tribe Department of Public Safety posted on Wednesday night that officers were aware of the social media threats. A half hour later, the tribal authorities posted again that the boy who made the threats, along with his parents, were taken into custody. School will resume tomorrow. A dismount woman is behind bars in Sioux Falls, accused of bringing a pistol into a hospital. 45-year-old Sheikah O oh is charged with making terrorist threats. Court documents say it happened at Avera McKinnon on Monday afternoon. Police tell us she threatened to shoot several people. She's being held on a $5,000 cash-only bond. A Canadian man admits to destroying energy facilities in North and South Dakota. The U.S. Attorney's Office says that Cameron Monty Smith has pleaded guilty to two counts of destruction of an energy facility. He faces up to 20 years in prison for each count. Smith admits to damaging a substation near Ray, North Dakota in May of last year and a pump station for the Keystone Pipeline near Carpenter, South Dakota in July of 2022. Officials say that he fired a high-powered rifle into the stations. In both cases, the damage was estimated at about $100,000. He is scheduled to be sentenced in Bismarck next year. Police and Pierre are warning people about a new scam. Authorities say they got a report that someone claiming to be the animal control officer for Pier Police was texting people who posted about their missing animals on social media. Officials say the scammers are trying to get owners to send $50 through money transfer apps. Just coming into our newsroom, firefighters are battling a large grass fire north of White River. The uh, Mission Volunteer Fire and Rescue shared this picture of the fire. A crews from Millette, Jones, Lyman, and Tripp counties are responding. In a post on social media, Jones County Emergency Management is asking people in Murdo to be prepared. Smoke could also be seen from our DOT cam. This is a developing story. Be sure to stay with Cabo Land News on air and online for updates as they become available. And I know that wind out there is not helping me. It is gusty out, especially, especially in central and western South Dakota, Jay. Yeah, Don, before you said we could see the uh, fire from a DOT camera. Actually, you could see it 
all the way from outer space. This is a look at our weather satellite. If you look right in the center of that little circle I drew there, right in the White River area, that's the plume of smoke. And you can see the south winds are pushing that from south to north. And that's why there are concerns that fire around White River is heading in the general direction of Myrtle. Now here's the problem. We have extremely strong winds in central South Dakota. These are the peak wind gusts within the past hour. That winter area up to the north, winds have been gusting around 50 miles per hour. So that's what's pushing that fire in the general direction of Murdo. So yeah, this could be a very bad situation. Of course, there are red flag warnings and wind advisories out in the central part of South Dakota. We also have a breeze here in Sioux Falls, not as strong. 85 degrees right now, south wind at 19 miles miles an hour. Aberdeen's 87 wind stronger there out of the south at 29. You can see it shaking our live cam a bit. Pier south wind at 26 shaking our live cam. So central South Dakota is where the strongest winds are. Rapid City right now 93 degrees south winds at 19. Only place we have clouds is in the western part of South Dakota. We do have those clouds there. There are a few thunder showers. They are not severe, but there is a little bit of lightning. And of course, we are all concerned about how dry the conditions are out there. So more fires could be an issue. But right now, the biggest one, the strongest one is that one out toward White River. Looks like we're going to keep the warm air hanging around through the weekend and actually much of next week. Your forecast update in just a few minutes. Thanks, Jay. 14 people were taken to the hospital, including 12 children, after a car collided with a bus in northern Minnesota this morning. Authorities say 20 kids were on the bus at the time. The St. Louis County Sheriff says the crash happened just before 8. The kids' injuries are considered non-life-threatening. The driver of the car was flown to an area hospital with serious injuries. The city of Minneapolis is making changes to the way it handles homeless encampments. An ordinance proposed is that more transparency when it comes to tracking locations and resources being offered to people. Reg Chapman with our CBS affiliate in Minneapolis has more on the effort and how those impacted feel about it. Encampments are popping up all over, and when they are closed down, it costs the city thousands of dollars, and the impact on the lives of people living there cannot be measured. I am appalled to live in a city where my tax dollars pay for bulldozers evicting and re-traumatizing the same group of residents over and over, and that we don't yet have the transparency, the oversight, and the accountability we need to show that any of this is working. The City Council's Public Health and Safety Committee heard testimony on a proposed ordinance focusing on transparency, accountability, and oversight for these encampment removals. I've been on here, I think, two and a half, almost three years. April calls these encampments home. She says she needs more than talk. All we hear is just everyone saying this and that about, you know, they're trying to help, but basically they're just kicking us out and where are we going to go next? And I totally understand this person, and so consequently, we're going to be saying what our immediate actions we can take now and what are some long-term actions we can take to have to be more sustainable. Council member Andrea Jenkins is putting together an encampment and unhoused community think tank. Members with lived experiences and stakeholders will meet three times and have a facilitated conversation. If they put in more action than they just say, then yeah, I think it probably would help. Because out here it's hard, it's scary. You know, sometimes we just need a, a direction of where to go, you know, other than just got to pack up and got to go. April's optimistic. She just hopes it happens fast to keep this growing problem from getting worse. Help us instead of trying to kick us out. Show us something that you guys do care about the people. Reg Chapman, WCCO News. An amended version of the ordinance passed that focuses on cost of removing encampments and tracking the outcome of those displaced. Think tank meetings begin next week.